What up, Misfits? Welcome to the Misfit Heroes Podcast. My name is Chris, and together we are going on a journey. Misfits, according to the National Cancer Institute, each year in the United States, an estimated 1 in 285 children will be diagnosed with cancer before their 20th birthday. Now, as difficult as this news is to receive for an adult, learning this as a child is not only difficult to understand, but also starts a path of treatment that is draining both emotionally and physically. My guest tonight aims to alleviate those painful events for children by sharing an experience with their favorite princess and superhero characters, and her videos with these children are truly magical. Alyssa Banks is the creator and executive director of the Princess Program Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit that brings joy to children with terminal illnesses by offering in-person and Zoom meetings with princesses. Since 2017, Banks and her merry group of volunteers have been delighting children with terminal illnesses across the United States and internationally, all while she's also working on her own personal nursing degree. We discuss the heart-wrenching story of how her organization got started, the dedication and dexterity it takes to keep character in these difficult conversations, and the emotional response that Alyssa and the princesses get when a child tells them that they rung the bell to tell them they beat cancer. Misfits, let's put on that glass slipper, get to the ball, and kick off season three the right way. Please welcome Alyssa Banks. Playing the Misfit Heroes podcast. All right. Well, Alyssa, I got to say, this is a first. You know, it's not very often that I get to speak to a real live princess. And I'm very excited to talk to you. I I think what you're doing is just fantastic. Um, Welcome to the Misfit Heroes podcast. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Let's explain to people what you all do. So if, if you haven't, if you haven't heard already, um, the Princess Program Foundation, um, I found out about you guys on TikTok and you had these videos and literally the first thing I saw is like, I thought it was like cosplay or something like that. Somebody doing some cosplays. And then I saw, then I saw who you were talking to. And so I'm just going to let you explain it. I mean, can you give us a little overview of what the Princess Pr- Program Foundation is and what you guys do? Yeah, of course. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we arrange visits with children that are battling serious illnesses such as cancer, um, epilepsy, heart diseases, things like that. And are their favorite character is the one to do the visit with them. And whether that's a home visit, a hospital visit, Zoom visits, we do it all. Yeah. <laughs> and we have been a nonprofit since January of 2020. Before that, we were a school organization and it was really small and it just kind of kept getting bigger. <laughs> and now we're here. So when exactly did this all get started? I think I saw one of your videos. Were, were you in college when it got started or high school or when was it? Yeah. So I was 18 years old and I was a freshman in college. Um, my life journey has been a little bit different than the typical college student journey. Yeah. So I was volunteering at a camp for kids who were terminally ill and I was playing mini golf with this little girl and I was telling her about the Disney trip that I took the previous summer before because I'm, as you can imagine, an avid Disney goer. Right. Um, <laughs> and she said to me, she looked up at me with like these really big sad eyes and she was just like, I'm never going to get to go to Disney. And it oh broke my heart. Like I was extremely upset by it, but it also planted a seed in my imagination to find a way to bring Disney to children like her, whether they're in the hospital or they're in their home and they're going through a serious illness. So I decided to start it as a school club and then life happened and the princess program took most of my attention. So I decided to change it into a nonprofit and you know, I'm still I'm still going to school. I'm in nursing school. I'm going to be done in a year and a half. That sounds like a lot going on. You know, I talk to a lot of people that are executive directors of nonprofits and things like that. And many people, when they hear this show, they don't realize how much actual work it is being involved in a nonprofit as well. To do that and to be a full time college student as well is, <laughs> you know, that's that's a little that's a little intense, you know. Um, so. I mean, is that is that like a, a trade off for you? I mean, what's what's your passion? Is there more in one or the other? I know that my passion is just to be around sick children and to help them in 
either way, whether it's dressing up as their favorite princess and going to visit them or whether it's, you know, being a nurse and like changing their IV medicine and walking them through what what's going on medically. I think that both aspects are full-time jobs um, and I give a hundred percent of myself to both sides of it. So I think that really I'm very passionate about both sides. So how do you guys get linked up with the patients that you meet with? How does that work? Sure. So we have a visit request form on our website and parents fill that out. Um, They fill out whether they're looking for a hospital visit, a home visit if they're local, and a Zoom visit if they're not local. Our count used to be 35 states that we visited out of the 50, but we definitely surpassed that this year. I was just counting up the care packages to go out because we also do care packages for our Zoom calls. Um, And I noticed how many different states there were. And it was like for each care package. So I definitely have to recount. (laughs) Yeah, you you guys are all over the place. I mean, it seems like every single every single video I see is just like another one, another one, another one. Yeah. It seems like everyone says it's like you're constantly putting content out there. And I'm like, but we're, we're just doing the zooms literally every day. Like that's why we have content to put out there every day because we're constantly doing it. With COVID, you know, zoom was like sort of the mainstay. I mean, that's how everybody's working now. I mean, um, but we just spoke before we got started doing this and you're doing, you're going back to in person more and more now as well. I mean, how yes. excited are you for that? <laughs> I'm so excited. It feels like we were never going to get back to go to in person because of how everything would frequently change, whether it was more restrictions or less restrictions. Nobody really knew what was going on. So to be able to go back and like see their faces light up when we walk into a room, it's such a different experience than virtual. And I've even gone on the last two hospital visits with our characters and just to see the way these kids' faces light up, there's nothing like it. Well, that's fantastic. I really think it's just a beautiful thing, you know, what what you, the way that you bring joy in an area that could easily have very little joy in it, you know what I mean? And I, I just, I think it's just such a good thing. So your, your princesses that you have, you do it as, as well as some volunteers, correct? Yes. So can anyone volunteer? Are there any requirements or, or how, how do people get involved as a volunteer? What are you guys looking for? So right now for our Zoom visits, we're looking for people that have worked with like character companies before. So they already have their own like costuming and stuff like that, that they can use for the Zoom visits. For our in-person visits, we're mainly just looking for people that you know, have good hearts and that want to make a difference in the lives of these kids. Um, For local visits, we have an entire room here filled with costuming and accessories and everything like that. So getting back into that and being able to have people that couldn't be in the organization before because they don't have their own costuming, but they're local is amazing because now we can go to both sides of it, you know? Well, I noticed a lot of the characters are Disney princesses. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit, you know, has there been any interaction? Like, have you all reached out to Disney or vice versa as to, um, you know, helping each other out? So we are a separate corporation other than Disney. Our characters are loosely recognizable as Disney characters, (laughs) but we are not in any way affiliated with Disney and we don't hope to be. So instead of Elsa, it's Ezla. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really neat. I was watching one earlier with, um, with Ariel and, um, and the, you saw, you saw this little girl's eyes just light up, She's like, oh, you know? Yeah. Well, cosplay is huge right now, you know? And I mean, are you all, uh, are you all only looking for princesses or are there also male characters as well? We have lots of male characters that we're interested in offering. It's harder to come by male characters that, you know, have their own armor and everything. So right now we have a few like in our prospective volunteer groups that are going to be joining us and we're going to get some more male characters out there is my hope. I know that 3D printing in the cosplay world is huge. I'm I'm very big into the 3D printing game as well. So, Mm -hmm. um, but 
but I, I would think I would think I mean I know that there's a lot of people that make like their own Iron Man suits or their own uh, yeah. their own Halo helmets and Mandalorian helmets and stuff like that. So I know that's I know that's big. So there's definitely a market out there for it. Oh yeah. For sure. So with that being said, I mean, since you're not affiliated or anything like that, is there any type of cost associated with what you guys do? And, you know, how much how much of an impact does that have in the actual interactions that you're having with people? Of course. So we're a nonprofit organization. So nobody like the volunteers, the board, we don't make a salary based off of what we do. We take that money and we put it towards costuming towards books for the kids towards care packages things like that and it adds up big time um like we are spending like three hundred dollars per character because that's how much it is to like get the official like suit or get the official dress um and like then you add in the wigs and the accessories and but we try to put as much realism as possible into it. So because the whole point is so the kids realize that it's the real character. Yeah. So whenever anybody asks me, like, what are my donations going towards? And I'm like, that magic moment, whether it's the basket that we bring in specially designed for them that has all their favorite toys in it or, you know, Princess Ariel, Princess Ariel's dress, like, things like that. So, well, I saw the care packages that you guys send out, you know, do, do, um, patrons sort of donate those to you or do you guys buy those in house now? And and if so, I mean, how can people get them to you? So the best way to help with care packages, I have to update it, but our Amazon wish list that's in our TikTok bio is the best way that people can help contribute to the care packages. And we also have a few different spots on our website where like, you can donate $15 to ship a care package. You can donate $25 to fill one and we'll, you know, take that money and go to like our local target and find different things that we can put in the care package and then have them sent out to the child. A lot of the um, care packages come from the zoom calls, whether it's they had a zoom call and it's like a letter checking in from their favorite character asking how they're doing and then including a bunch of toys with it or like our latest in-person packages, I guess you could call them um, where we do a special basket like design with the kid's name on it and everything. And then it has like a bunch of different stuff for them to do during their visit with the character in person. So yeah, I saw one, it had like a tiara and a wand in it and things like that. I mean, yeah. It's really neat. You know, what what you're doing is just, it's so needed. You know, I wanted to talk about a couple of the videos that I saw. You know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And there's there's some of the videos that the kids are crying in them. And then there's some of them that they're extremely happy. And you, you get this kind of emotional roller coaster. You know what I mean? I mean, I got to be honest. It's got to be so satisfying when you see, when you hear one of these kids say, I just rang the bell and I don't have cancer anymore. That's got to be like, yes. yeah, right? Yeah, it's it's literally my favorite thing in the entire world. Yeah, I mean that's that's fantastic. You know, as as somebody that is interested in maybe getting involved with you all, is that is that emotional roller coaster that we were just talking about? Is that something that you know they need to be ready for, or do you guys train anything at all like that, or like? And and I guess my other question is, how difficult is that to sort of deal with after you're meeting with people? Yeah. So we're always, um, when we train new volunteers, we kind of explain like, okay, you're, you're having a conversation with a four-year-old, but it's not like a typical four-year-old that's going outside all day and riding a bike. It like the child is stuck in their hospital bed and they have nurses and doctors in and out and they might be telling you about their favorite TV show. And then five seconds later, they're like, oh yeah, like I'm getting chemo and it's awful. And like to be able to be on both sides of that wavelength can only come with experience. I've found so our volunteers that have been with us for a while and have experienced it, you kind of you see them grow from like that very first call where a child mentions something that might be very hard for them to hear. And they're just kind of like. I have no idea what to do. And they right. just have like this look on their face where they're like, help. Um, and right. then like a few calls later, you see them talking to the child, like, Oh, how does that make you feel? I'm so sorry. You're going through that. Like, and it is such an experience 
for these volunteers to have. And I think that a huge part of it is showing the difficult side to it. Um, A lot of people don't agree with the way that we show both sides of it, whether it's the kids are extremely happy or the kids are extremely sad. Um, But you're seeing the sad piece of it because like that video showed up on your for you page and you were touched by it, whether it's touched in a good way or a bad way. It's that it got your attention. And like, that's what these families want. They want attention for these kids going through this because if there was more attention, there'd be more awareness and maybe we would get closer to having like, drugs for kids that haven't been approved in like the early 1900s. Like, so a huge piece of it is awareness. And I think no matter what anyone's point of view on that is, that is something I always want to stay true to is showing the difficult side of it. Because like, I've checked in with a mom after I posted it and I'm like, is this okay with you? Like, everyone seems to be really upset that your child is upset in this video and like rightfully so. Um, And the mom would say to me, no, like, thank you for posting that because now people are seeing that there's this side to childhood cancer. And I think that that's a huge part of it. And if the parents are telling me that that's what they want, that's who I'm going to listen to at the end of the day. With the advent of social media, particularly in the last couple of years, I think that the norm unfortunately seems to be bring the negativity. It it doesn't uh, maybe not bring the negativity is not the right way to say it, but it doesn't feel like people are leading with support. It it, it almost seems like immediately just like bring the hate. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, I can't believe you did this. I can't believe you did this versus why did you do this? There's no like understanding. Yeah. Yeah. There's very little understanding. Yeah. I I think that's a great way of of you, the way you just explained it, because, you know, I think, I think we, we really need to get back to that. I think it's so detrimental to our communication as a people, you know? Yeah. It's like being afraid to post because you're afraid how people are going to react when, if you know the reason behind why you were posting that, maybe they would react differently or maybe they wouldn't because some people just have their minds made up, you know, but I think that these kids are going through something horrific. And if we don't show that people aren't going to know about it. Yeah. You know, that, that self censorship that you're talking about is a big deal right now. I was, I was actually uh, this past weekend, I was at a podcasting conference and I was speaking with a woman who she had sent out to her email list it was something about dietary restrictions or something like that. And because of her email list, her rest of her platforms, all of her social media got notification because she got those emails from social media and they canceled all of her social media platforms. You know, I, I just, I don't see where I don't, I don't see where people get that. That's a good idea to sort of take away somebody's good deeds, particularly with the people that I speak with in this podcast. It's, it's, it's all people doing good things, but you would be amazed how many times I hear where somebody's, you know, either they had to take a couple, take a month or two off because they couldn't deal with all the negativity that people were bringing or something like that. So I feel for you. I also wanted to say, you know, in those same videos, there's a couple videos in there where one of the, for example, one of the, uh, there was a little girl crying because she was having, um, seizures, I think like that. And, but you see the little girl on the bottom, but the, the, the face of the princess that you had, I mean, the the dexterity that she had when this little girl is telling her that stuff. I, I mean, how how exactly how exactly do you guys deal with that? I mean, it's got to be a lot to deal with. Is there any training that you provide for them? A huge piece of it is just being able to talk about it. Where like my volunteers feel comfortable coming to me and being like, "That was the hardest Zoom call I've ever been on," and I don't know like if I can keep doing this. And then you know we break down the little things like. Like, why did it make you upset? How can you, like, kind of turn off that emotion? Um, A huge piece of this is acting. And, you know, you're representing a fictitious character. Like, the Little Mermaid isn't going to know what cancer is. The Little Mermaid isn't going to know what chemo is. The Little Mermaid isn't going to know about different um, treatments that these kids are going through. But... 
it's also the piece of like, this is the educational portion. Like I'm becoming educated as a character, but I'm also not like thinking too far into it where like, I am heartbroken by what this kid is going through. Cause it is very easy to get off a call and like be sobbing because you know what they're going through and you see behind the scenes and you're watching a four year old, like tell you in their own words, what's going on. And that's extremely difficult. But another piece of it is like being able to turn off that emotion and just play the character for the time being. Well, it takes, it takes a lot of moxie. I'll tell you that much. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know that, I don't know that everybody could do it. I don't know that I could do it. I, th- I think it'd be very difficult to to do that. Plus I would look really weird in a dress. So that would be, <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, see, I put an image in your head, didn't I? See, um, <laughs> what are you guys looking for? I mean, what, how can people help you all out? What is, is there something in particular that you need to sort of grow the organization a little bit? What do you all need? How can people help you all out a little bit? So right now we are doing in-person visits and it's getting to be, at first it was like in-person visits, you know, in our home state of Massachusetts. And then it became, we're doing an in-person visit in Florida. We're doing an in-person visit in Wisconsin. We're doing an in-person visit in Washington. Like it became national so fast. And with that, we need more donations to keep going. Um, So I think the huge part of it right now is if you're able to donate even like $5, 15, it all adds up and it helps us get to these different states to do these different visits. And so how can people donate to you? I mean, where, what do they do it through your website or do you guys have like a Patreon or what's, what's your, what type of things do you guys have? So we have a website, we have a PayPal, a Venmo, um, all of that information can be found on our website. And there's even options for like, you can sponsor a dream day package, Um, a dream day is when we do a private meet and greet with a child and their favorite character. We just did one this past weekend where a little girl who rang the bell, um, got to meet the little mermaid in person and swim with her. And it was absolutely incredible. Um, so like to sponsor a dream day package, it's a hundred dollars and that's like nuts to bolts of the entire day with the child. I'll put all that information down in the show notes down below so everybody can find it for you. But with that being said, what is your website and what are your social media handles and all that stuff? Where can people find you on the internet? Yeah. So our TikTok, where a lot of people find us, is Princess Program <laughs> Official. And our Instagram is Princess Program dot official. And then on Facebook, we're just the Princess Program Foundation. Well, like I said, I will put all that information down below so everybody can go check you out. And Miss Fitz, I definitely think you should go check Alyssa and the foundation out. I think what they're doing is just an amazing feat. And I think, I think it's a very difficult task and I have a lot of respect for, for what you do for the impact that you're making with these kids. I think it's, I think it's just a beautiful thing. So kudos. Thank you so much. Thank you. That means a lot. Definitely. Well, we're, we're getting down towards the end of the show a little bit. And, you know, at at the end of every interview, I ask everybody the same question and I normally get a deer in the headlight looks because I never, uh, I never give anybody any, uh, time to prep for it or anything like that. So here it is. Get ready. What was the last goal that you completed? And what was the next goal that you want to set for yourself? And this can be this can be related to the princess program, or it can be something personal. Whatever you got, the first thing that comes to your mind. What was the last goal that you completed, and what's the next goal that you want to set for yourself? So the last goal that we completed was going to Orlando Children's Hospital, and it was our first out of state hospital visit. Um, it was absolutely incredible, and we were able to talk about setting something up once a month with local Orlando volunteers. Um, And just the fact that we were able to go from state to national in a matter of like five seconds was amazing um, and beautiful to see. And then my next goal is I want to start a children's book series of what these kids go through, but also their interactions with the characters. So like we had a little girl tell Mr. Mouse about um, her IV pole named Robot. And so she, we don't know why she called it Robot, but that was, that was her way of explaining that. So like one of the books is going to be about a little girl like teaching Mr. Mouse about the 
IV pole named robot in her room and like how it gives her her medicines and stuff like that. And I think that it's something so needed in like these hospitals is some literature that the kids can relate to, but also it also showcases what we do with the nonprofit. So that is my goal. I don't know when that's going to be accomplished because, you know, nursing student and busy life. Um, but that is my next goal. You're not going to get that done tomorrow? No, no. <laughs> well, that's that's uh, that's that's actually a really interesting thing. I, I agree. I think that people, um, you know, I think when they're in this situation, it seems like all of the literature would be like medical documents that a four-year-old isn't going to understand. So having something mm-hmm. like that is a great idea to sort of um, explain to them in a method that they can receive it in. You know. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. So I didn't. Uh, I didn't ask you this as well. You said it went national fairly quickly. Have you also had any um, any international meetings as well? We have zoomed with a bunch of kiddos from Canada, the United Kingdom, um, Australia. So we're definitely international as well. Well, you're making quite an impact, and like I said, I'm just really impressed with what you guys do. And I think I think you're just. Uh, I, I think. I think you're a light in a very, what can be seen as a very dark world. And I think, I think that's a, I I just think it's a a tremendous uh, impact that you're making. And I'm just very respectful and happy that there's people out there like you doing it. Thank you very much. Certainly. Certainly. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm very glad that you took the time to sit down and speak with me. Give me that website and all your contact information one more time so I can send people to you. Sure. Um, Our website is www.princessprogram.foundation. Our TikTok is princessprogramofficial. Our Instagram is princessprogram.official. And just Facebook is plain old, the Princess Program Foundation. Well, Misfits, there you go. Check it out. It has been a pleasure speaking with you, Alyssa. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. No worries. You have a good afternoon, okay? You too. Thank you. Well, Misfits, we did it. That's our episode. I want to thank you so much for listening and thanks again to our sponsors. If you want to support any of the sponsors of this podcast, there are affiliate links on the sponsors tab of our website over at www.misfit-heroes.com. You can also find links to all of our social media there, so be sure to follow us for immediate up-to-date info about the podcast. Please, if you enjoyed this podcast and you want to help me out, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button down below so you're notified of new episodes as they're released. And make sure to leave a rating or review of the show on Apple Podcasts and YouTube. Truly Misfits, I love you. Thank you so much for listening. And until the next episode, be kind, love one another, and be a hero.